Kiwi Squash Cast is an in-season pod and vodcast for New Zealand squash fans. Each episode gives an update on the squash scene from a Kiwi perspective. We cover local and international pro squash and provide updates on domestic events. In each episode, we feature interviews with persons of interest and tips for your squash game. Message if you have content that demands to be on the show. Subscribe to our social media accounts for updates. training Monday morning 9.30 till 10.30 yep. so I only have a couple meetings in my office that's one Tuesday morning I have a team meeting yep. which is everyone uh, Monday night I have cousin shield training it's my one head a week <laughs> actually if I do yeah. if I yep. turn up and do it um, yep. and then I do two lessons Monday then I do like five to seven lessons at Remure on Wednesday oh yeah, yeah. and then okay. the rest of the week is all just meetings um and then open homes on the weekend. Okay. What else do I do? Just so, so you were the guy that effed up the draw last weekend because right, you had to play early so you could go to yeah. your open home. Is that, yeah. is that, is that the I draw? changed the time and then yeah. I lost. Yeah, you lost. <laughs> I actually missed anyway. Fraser this morning. Fraser Spencer. I was like, just for changing the time, mate. No, no, Sorry about losing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I said that though originally. I said, oh, mate, I don't know if I'll win, but if I, yeah. if I do win, I'm going to struggle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, how do you find... I mean, just talking about that, how do you find the real estate lifestyle? I mean, obviously it's flexible, but then you've got weekend commitments and that kind of thing. And it's early days. I guess you're not sick of it, but it's different, right? No, I love it. I love it, to be honest. It's flexible, but it's not flexible because you, like it's flexible in a way, but then on the other hand, you're always getting phone calls, you know? Yeah, yeah. If I don't get a phone call during this next half an hour, I'll be surprised. Yeah. There's always someone wanting to ask something. And then on the other hand, like if you want to get more work, you need to do more work. So you can do as little as you want, yeah. but then at the end of the year, you might end up with zero dollars. You know. Yeah, you're I mean? not going to pay a lot of tax. There's always yeah. there's always other things that you can do. You can always fly drop more. You can always post yeah. more on social media. You can always knock on more doors. Yeah. So it's kind of up to you. I was lucky because I got my first listing in my first week. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And, um, yeah, that's true. My manager was kind of saying, if you get anything in the first six months, then you'll keep your job. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So yeah, I was lucky true. to get this that one. Um, and then it actually goes unconditional five o'clock today. Oh, really? Yeah. So this is um, um guaranteed p- yeah. Paul's. Yeah, Paul's yeah. House, and, yeah. And um, oh, cool. That's awesome, dude. So yeah, it's congratulations. Yeah, so sure. a beers are on you then. That's the one. <laughs> Pays might be something few, few more dollars than um than winning a squash tour. Oh, I can imagine. Or the ones that I used to win anyway. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, lately. actually, uh, yeah. On that note, I mean, did you see Evans post um, after he won Henderson? Yeah, the Instagram did. story. You yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit controversial, but. Uh, I, unfortunately, I, like this, yeah. I think the ti- I, I think it was absolutely bang on. Um, but the I timing th- was the timing was terrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but he was absolutely bang on because that's the reality. A lot of people wouldn't yeah. wouldn't know that um, you lose money playing PSA even if you're top hundred. Yeah. I think the thing for me, squash doesn't get enough publicity as it is. So for people to actually be talking yeah. about a squash post for me, even though it's my club and everything, and like it, it yeah. was a great time, and he probably thought. Yeah. When he was typing, I bet you he thought, "Oh, this might get a few comments and stuff." Yeah. But on the other hand, people are talking about it, so yeah, I yeah. don't mind it, and it is yeah. true. You know what yeah. I mean? That's a hundred percent true. He came up yeah. and won a six k, whatever it is. But I think it was like thousand dollars ish for first. Stayed yeah, in the motel yeah, yeah, that's right. For no, three no, nights, yeah. flew up. Yeah, would have been eating out a few of the times. Like yeah. he didn't have much left over. And that's no, no, that's right. Know. And then what, what? What did he give up in terms of what he could have earned? Yeah, yeah, especially yeah, sure. now. Yeah, yeah. sorry, the week, and he said he was doing forty hours of individual coaching this week coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's decent. So that'll pay more than one. Well, he's bought a house, so um, yeah, gotta, that, yeah. I mean, that's motivation, right? It's got to pay the bills um, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I, I know what you're saying. A lot of people. Um, well, one thing I said to to our, our mutual good friend uh, Rod Bannister was because um, we were talking about something and and, yeah. and I said to him, look, mate, uh, professional squash in New Zealand is a blood sport in the sense that people are gonna hit you, you know they're gonna fire shots at you and they're gonna try and um, you know what I mean whether you deserve it or not. Yeah. It's just the nature of the game, and whether you like it or not, you might prefer it was different. That's just mm. the way it is right now. Yeah. So um, you know. Um, 
and it's a bit of a wake up call to say for young juniors coming through they'll yeah. think that <clears throat> you know because they're a young junior and they're doing well um, some of the girls in particular some of the parents have complained about certain things and it's like you have no idea what's coming you know, because in the so next year tough. or two, people will rip into you. They'll tell you that yeah. you're lazy, that you didn't try, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and it, it probably shouldn't be that way, mm. um, but it is. It's a tough time, eh? And I think in squash in New Zealand, maybe this is a lot of sports. Like, throughout your junior years, everyone seems to love it. You go to all the junior tournaments. And there's such a good system for squash where yeah, all great. the juniors turn up and, you, you know, you know people from all around the country. You get friends everywhere. Your parents, well, I know when I was growing up, my parents would be at the bar with all yep. of um, my opponents, you know, parents, but we all all good friends and so were they. Mm. Then you get to the stage where it's make a decision. At my time, I wanted to go pro and, and a couple of other boys um, from my year did as well. So you kind of get to that point. There's other guys that, that were a good level as well, but financially, yeah, it's such a big decision, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Like you either mm. going to, like in squash, it's... It's, it's so tough. Um, the tournaments, you know, $500 first, up to $1,000 first, I guess, in general. That's one person that's going to get that yep. at the end of each weekend. Not every weekend as well. Everyone else, you're battling away for like $100, $200. Yep. You know, rent is $250, yep. you know? Yeah, that's right. So just to, just to try to cover your rent, is, it's brutal. Um, well, that's right. I, I mean, um, you know, you, you can give me lots of stories as well, but I, I always say to when people ask me... Um, I say, you know, Luamba is, is uh, plays for New Zealand senior level, which not that many people do. Yeah. Um, he's sleeping in a garage. Um, and he doesn't have a car. Yeah. Um, he's literally... He doesn't have a car. No. He, he, well, team, they share a car, but oh, mostly, mostly teams drives yeah. it. Um, Didn't he have... Did he crash this one or something? No, no, no. no the, the, um, there must be some story. Of no, the, the Victra. Was it a Victra? <laughs> Oh, that's right. No, that died. I didn't know that. Yeah, it died. I knew that. Yeah, um, it was falling apart. Yeah. And then uh, what else happened? Um, but yeah, what, and then I say literally, uh, he's a bit like you in the sense that the clothes that he wears, not you now, but before, you know, yeah. they're sponsored clothes. Oh, the clothes yeah. he hasn't paid for. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. Um, and yeah, sometimes he dresses up, but yeah, 90% go, of the I time. I had to go buy somebody's yeah. shirts. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. my jacket. It's not yeah. going to feature today, but maybe I'll. Yeah, no, it's decent. It's, it's, um, it's not bad, eh? Something you'd wear in the UK, I'm surprised. But I yeah, guess you're out and about in the weather. I know. Uh, don't. Don't normally wear it much in New Zealand. in my open homes. But, you know, it's, it's tough. I agree, it's tough. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, there's certainly a lot of people with opinions and they're not afraid to share them. Um, yeah, it's easy to get hate and it's hard to get much praise, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's for sure. Well, I think it's a New Zealand thing that yeah, um, is, a lot of people think certain things, don't say anything, yeah. um, and then it's only the complainers that actually speak up, generally. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty rare. I got a couple of nice comments on the weekend about the live streaming. Mm. Um, that's pretty rare. Most people will just rip into you and say that, um, you know, something, the score was wrong for yeah. one second. Do you know what I mean? Actually. Yeah, that's right. Well, I flicked a button and I switched the players around. No, the live stream uh, was good actually button, because you know? I, I mean, I usually, <laughs> especially well, this tournament, I only had one day there anyway, but all the rest of the tournaments in Auckland, I've been trying to turn up, you know, for a day, show yeah, my yeah, face, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. it's good to see the boys and watch the games. But other than that, I'll just be at home or, you know, some I'll be out and you can just have a look and, and see the matches. Yeah, um, yeah. Which is pretty good. Well, I think it's, um, what, what I've tried to explain to a lot of different people is there's, there's different kind of levels. So there's a group of people that will watch anything if their kid is playing in it or their yeah. grandkid. And so if you live stream secondary schools, you'll get X number of people watching it because those are people that are directly related to the contestants. Yeah. And they probably aren't going to be too worried about the quality of it. They probably don't even play squash. They can't see the ball. They don't care. Yeah. They're just happy to see, see their kid and, and yeah, get exactly. an update on the score. And then you've got people that are squash fiends. Yeah. Um, and if the stream's of poor quality, they won't watch it. They'll, they'll click on and see what's going on, but they're not going to sit down and watch it. But yeah. I know there's a lot of people now, particularly with the way who are just casting from their phone to their TV. Yeah. Um, or, or, or now they're setting up and they're going yeah. directly from... Um, a computer or, or through their TV And apps, I think the other thing know? is because there's so many tournaments at the moment in a row, it's actually, mm. you can follow it, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Even that, I, mean, I don't know if it's a series right now, but it's kind of like <clears> a series in a way yeah, yeah. where you're like, oh cool, I wonder who's going to win next weekend. And yeah. I think people, because in general, it's most of the same players and a lot, you know. Yeah. I know, I think Tim Ryan, Joel, Lauren, where they played a lot of them, Evans played the bigger ones. Yeah. Um, there's not too many different so you can kind of start to follow them and you know 
pick your favorite one and hope that they win each week or whatever yeah well we because we, i mean obviously when we're doing the stream we track uh how many people are watching and that yeah. kind of stuff and there's way more people watching the stream than are there live who's the most watch player um uh, well, I mean, like, say on the weekend, the final was the, the most popular, uh, yeah, uh, in terms of views. Um, but the other thing, too, is it's not just the number of views. It's how yeah. long they people are watching watch for. And these people yeah. are watching the whole freaking game. Really? And then they're commenting and they're making score predictions and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so they're definitely getting into it. And I agree with you. I've said this to a lot of people before that there is scope to do this. You know, it's almost like a bit of a soap opera. You know, when are these guys going to beat Evan? Will they beat him? Yeah. How long is he going to keep them off? Caitlin's come back. You know, if you're into sort of creating stories, there's plenty yeah. of opportunity to do that. Um, and yeah, we've definitely seen a number issue. of people I'm, I'm, viewers grow. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Especially at the moment, I'm more interested in watching these guys. I think in particular the two matchups is Evan Temwa and Evan Lawamba. Yeah. Those are probably my favourite games to watch at the moment. Um, obviously, Lawamba got his first win against Evan last year. Same yeah. tournament, actually, yeah, Pan yeah. Open. Yeah, that's right. Um, but I mean, even to keep <clears throat> to keep holding on and to keep you know beating these guys, where last year, to be honest, from that win against uh, when Lawamba took him, I think I thought, and a few other people probably thought as well, that maybe Louis was going to kick on and yeah, and keep on top. But I think Evans actually done super well to up his game and just to. I mean, a couple of five setters, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, I'd be interested in your in your opinion. I sort of feel that um, Evan wasn't playing great a couple of years ago. Um, I, I actually think he's playing better now. He may not yeah. be. Um, I guess we'll find out. This is where, just to add to what you are saying before, yeah. it kind of gets juicy now because we've got the Aussies coming over. So we've had yeah. this domestic series and it's been quite interesting. And now it's a bit like the rugby going trans-Tasman. Mm. We're going trans-Tasman in two weeks' time. Yeah, and that's going to really be useful because it'll, it'll give us a very clear indication. I think the Aussies are probably a little bit undercooked, but you've got four guys between 100 and 150 in the world. Yeah. And it'll be really um, great to see how they match up against our guys. I think, yeah, but back to what I was going to say, and I'm interested in your opinion. Um, I think Evan is playing better now than he was two years ago. I feel that whether it's because he knew he was going to have a shot at nationals or, or whatever the motivation was or whether it's setting up his coaching business, but he's definitely found um, a drive and um, he's got a bit smarter. He obviously likes working with Matt Green mm. and he's definitely improved, in my view, compared to what he was two years ago. Now, whether that's better than what he was five years ago, yeah. you'd be a better judge of that. Um, but it's going to be very interesting to see him match up against some of these other guys. It's hard to know for me how, like, what the exact levels are because I don't really train it much anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't compare myself, you know what I mean? And that's the only way I could yeah. really compare it. And then on the other hand, it's hard for me right now to, to judge Lawamba, Tiamwa, Joel, Wills, every, everyone that's kind of coming up. Yeah. Because they're not getting the overseas matches, which they yes. are going to soon, you know what I mean? Yeah. If they were in England playing guys 150 in the world, 100 in the world, yeah. then you'd really be able to see. But at the moment, because they're just playing each other, yes, it's hard to know whether that level is heaps better or not quite as good. Um, no, I agree with that. I yeah. think because these boys are starting to, starting to lift their own level, I think that's probably driving Evan more right now, you know what I mean? Where a few years back, or probably two years back in particular... Two years back, there was nationals two years ago. Eh? Where was that? Unity? Yeah, um, twenty seventeen was Hindo. Then eighteen was um, or was it? And then yeah, then yeah. Unitech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like twenty eighteen, for yeah. example, I had just stopped playing full time. I think maybe three months before nationals. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, and I came fourth after no, I came third. Evan came second. After yeah. me at that stage, I think everyone was quite a bit younger. You know what I mean? Yeah, you so beat, he didn't really came fourth, right? Yeah, Gabe came for Because he beat Luke Jones earlier and yeah, yeah. Gabe yeah. cooked three on the third and fourth. Cheers, yeah. Gabe. Yeah, yeah. Um but other than that, like there was not this wasn't really tough matches. I mean, even for me to make to come third for not really playing much for three months, you know what I mean? It yeah. kinda goes to show where these days, if you're not putting in the work, you're gonna get found out pretty quickly. So yeah. I think probably yeah. maybe maybe the Luamba game last year actually pushed him more. Yeah, sure Obviously knew yeah. he knew Nationals yeah. was gonna be a massive opportunity because there's no Paul, there's no Campbell. Yep. And there was, oh, there was, I was going to say there's no Lance, but there, I was there. Um, but yeah, I think because these guys are lifting their level, that's probably pushing him. Um, yeah, definitely. And like yeah. I said, he's done well. Like, he's won both tournaments this year. Was just, Shouldn't have won Henderson, <laughs> judging by the score early on in the final, but he, yeah, yeah. somehow yeah. he found a way. Yeah, yeah no, that's, good what, on, that's yeah. what the good players do. They find yeah, that's a way. right. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's fair right. play to him. 
I mean, from our point of view, it's kind of, on the one hand, it's irritating my guys aren't breaking through, but yeah. on the other hand, um, in all seriousness, um, when they do, they're going to be the better for it because it's, the, the hill's higher to climb, so their level's going to be higher. Yeah. Um, so I don't really have any problem with it right now. Um, no. And I know they've got a lot of scope to improve. Yeah. I think if they don't end up passing him, like that's on them. You know what I mean? But right mm. now, Evan's doing, like I said, he's doing 40 hours of yeah. coaching. Like yeah. That's a lot of hours. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So he's, he's obviously staying very disciplined to put in the training around that. Because yeah, I know once right. I started to coach a bit more, geez, it's tough to, to keep on doing all your training. Yeah, I'm um, not sure how long he'll do it for, but I mean, obviously yeah. with his social media posts, I mean, from time to time, you know, he pops up that he starts really, really early and yeah, what have does. you. And, yeah. and so he does, he, he's definitely doing the sessions. He's I mean, putting you, in the work. Otherwise, he wouldn't, be, he wouldn't yeah. be beating these guys. You, you can't back up. I mean, no. Tim, what, what was it? Over an hour, five setter yeah. on Saturday evening. It's twice an hour. And then it was just under an hour on Sunday. Yeah. And he looked a bit ragged, but, um, you know, he was hanging in there, no worries at all. Yeah, he's yeah. managing to scrape through the wind, so. Yeah, yeah. So good on him. Yeah. Um, how did we get onto that topic? That's interesting. Well, you talked about juniors anyway. So obviously yeah. you had a pretty decent junior career. Um, and um, we can probably, we probably both agree the New Zealand system is pretty good for juniors insofar as there's lots of tournaments and there's lots of, lots of activity. Um, yeah. And we may or may not, we can argue about whether we think the level's good enough or how it could be made better. But in terms of the actual scene as such, it's pretty good. Yeah, I think it's unbelievable in general. Um, having these tournaments like i said i mean the, one of the best things for me is you just make great friends around the whole country yeah um from from nine ten years old <clears throat> i had like best friends all around new zealand so if i was going anywhere you had a place to stay you know on the other hand like the age groups and, and the grading list i think is unbelievable it's so good um you compare it to so f as far as i'm aware anywhere else in the world and i yep. think we have the best um the best system maybe numbers have dropped away a little bit from some of the age group tournaments i think one thing for me i remember when i was under 11 i think it was at north shore um auckland junior age we had a 32 draw oh yeah, for yeah. under 11s wow yeah it's a lot like yeah. a full 32 yeah. draw where now i don't see all the tournaments but I, I know i think auckland there might have been like three or four maybe i'm not sure well, so, they, they uh, don't do age group in auckland juniors now anyway yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. i know there's a big thing yeah. around that yeah. anyway but still, yeah, you know what sure. I mean? Um, and saying that, I know, like the Double Dot series, for example, I know they, they get a few like kids, so maybe it's just about p bringing those kids through, yep. you know, to the to the whole tournament scene. And yep. even at our club, I know there's a couple of kids here and there that are slowly starting to get more and more in the scene, um, which is good. Yeah, I know. I think the numbers are, are kind of reasonable. I guess yeah. um, you need to be a bit closer to that to, that to really sort of uh, spot any trends, favourable or otherwise. But yep. if you still go to... Junior Nats, it's still, it's still full, you know. Yeah, it's um, great. Yeah. And and it's it's a decent buzz. Um, the uh, so just before we go back into some of that kind of stuff, so from juniors to pro, um, yeah. I think I, I'm a little bit biased, but I think a lot of people probably massively underestimate that transition uh, sure. and how yeah. difficult it is. You talked about the financial pressure before, which is 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 very real. But there's also a whole pile of other things where, um, I mean, most kids, I mean, I get ripped because I sometimes prick a few balloons where people say so-and-so's amazing, they're going to be the next great, best thing. And I say, yeah. well, you know, they might be, but you kind of got to wait till they're 19, 20 years old. Mm. They've got out, you know, they, they're not getting told what to do by their mum and dad anymore. Yeah. And then you find out how much they love the game and how willing they are to put in the hard yards. 100%. Um, because a decent quantity... Um, start to falter once um, they get to choose what they do. I think it's, it's that and then it's finding out the actual work that they have to put in. Yeah. You know, once you've hit that professional level, a lot of, I mean, there's loads of talented kids throughout New Zealand, isn't there? Yeah. But once you find out what you actually need to do physically um, and doing that consistently day in, day out, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah. And then obviously, like injuries and stuff as well, there's rehab there's so many things that you actually need to do um that's why i'd really take my hat off to the top guys in the world you know yeah i guess at yeah. any sport yeah that's right <clears throat> squash in particular because i played but um jesus that's right yeah mate too much talking you may be 
too many sales pitches. No, no. Um, yeah, no, no, I agree with you. I mean, I, well, the reason, I, I mean, it's pretty obvious from my point of view. Like, we, we, you come across a lot of people. And everyone you talk to that's coming through and playing these events, yeah. they're all training hard, you yeah. know? Yeah, and then sure. my guys roll their eyes and say, oh, you're, they're training hard. They're not training as hard as us. Well, they may have, may they not be. But I always yeah. say to them, look, though, everybody is training hard. Mm. Um, but, um, and they train really hard for a session and they absolutely knacker themselves. I said, the difference is, do they do that again that afternoon and maybe again that night with a match yeah. you know what i mean and yeah. then do it again tomorrow yeah you know because everyone trains hard but do they do the volume that you're mm. doing do they do the off-court stuff you know do, are they doing everything like you say the the prehab rehab looking after your body are yeah. they doing that properly um are they doing the match analysis do they know what they're doing or they do they just play naturally which means they got no idea yeah. or or are they too reliant on a coach to tell them what to do which is great until the coach isn't there I think um, it's, it's, it's you know? both sides and it's training hard and then it's training smart. Yeah, exactly. Because there's yeah. a lot of people and you would have seen as well. And I think everyone probably goes through it in different stages. Like just training super hard, but are they training smart? I remember yeah. even Paul Cole, he was probably, it might have been a year ago, it might have been the start of COVID when he got a new fitness coach. Oh yeah, the, you know the American guy, ATP. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I remember yeah. reading some of that stuff yeah. and he was saying like he didn't realise he was so weak at some of the things. Yeah. So for him to be five in the world at that stage and get a new trainer and that guy says he's weak when most people in squash would look at him and say he's the fittest, strongest player in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Like there's yeah, always so yeah, much that yeah, you can is. learn, I think. Yeah, yeah, well, you have um, to keep learning, yeah. I mean, the, I mean, the, the thing is, um, uh, definitely uh, to use a, a cliche, having that growth mindset yeah. um, and always being open to ideas is what differentiates um, athletes that progress and athletes that don't. Um, and I have to say one thing I, I've always credited Paul with I've always said he's very open minded yeah. um, he does try a lot of stuff some is a bit weird and wonderful mm. um, but obviously it pays off for him yeah he's done alright hasn't he yeah yeah and no, he's done alright um, and uh, hopefully he's making a couple of dollars obviously it's a bit tougher at the moment with less yeah. camps exhibitions and that kind of stuff but um, I think one great thing about having him there is like I probably know because I know I'm more personal but when, when you get to that level, there definitely is money to be made. You mm, know what sure. I mean? Yeah. Um, there's not many of them that are actually doing super well, but I know for sure top 10. If you can crack that top 10 in the world, you will be doing financially well. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's fair enough too. The problem is yeah. how hard it is to get there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty tough. I mean, I think, um, I guess we'll talk about that. We've got plenty, if you've got plenty of time or whatever. Yeah, but, yeah I'm good. Yeah. Um, the, we can talk about rankings and levels and, and how that all plays out. Yeah. But I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people say to me, oh, why don't you play tennis or golf or something? But um, yeah, there's more money in those sports, but the ratios are pretty similar. Oh, um, yeah, for sure. You know, if you're outside the top 100 in tennis, you lose money. Yeah, you might earn a million dollars over a couple of years, but you're going to spend that on What's coaches the number one and on tennis? You know? 600, 6,000. You know? uh, exactly. And so, you know, the difference for guys like ourselves, yeah. you know, rightly or wrongly, is we kind of know what's required to make it in squash. So, yeah, yeah it's harder and all, um, but that's what we're doing. Yeah, you know? uh, we're not switching just because. Uh, well, you if know, you're doing something for money, you'd be. It's not going to work. An accountant, or you'd be yeah. a real estate well, agent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, that's right. We get to choose now. Well, exactly. You know. But. Um, yeah, no, definitely. Coming back to that financial thing, I mean, certainly, and, and I, I did, I'm not sure I finished the Luamba story about him having nothing. I remember Martin Dowson was asking me about something, and I said, look, the kid's got nothing. You know, his yeah. commitment to squash is 100%. He's got nothing. He doesn't have anything. Um, and um, But, you know, he accepts that, and, and, he, and he's yeah. willing to do he's that. He's really not that fussed about having nothing no. right now, isn't it? No, Which no. is a great place to be. I think I was yeah. probably quite similar. I think a lot of people probably are quite similar where you're just not that fussed, you know what I mean? He's, he's always a pretty happy guy, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and I think he's more focused on his goal and where he wants to go than exactly where he is right now, which is, which is great. It's yeah, that's right. To have. Yeah. Well, you have to. I, I think um, the, in all of these sports with the draws like they are, uh, yeah. and some sports, are, are, you know, all the dynamics are different, but if you play squash um, and there's 16 guys in the draw, 15 guys lose, yeah. uh, one guy wins. Um, and if you don't have a decent support group, if you don't know what you're doing, mm. if you can't put stuff into perspective, um, it gets pretty grim. I think a lot of the top juniors struggle because generally uh, um, a non-Egyptian junior is going to um, probably spend their first year on PSA losing in full PSA events. They probably won't win a game. Exactly. Um, and we've been lucky in New Zealand uh, having mm. lots of satellites, which um, 
Uh, I mean, I guess, look, to give you some credit, basically you and I really pioneered that. I know they did satellites before, yeah, but yeah. not to the extent that, yeah. that we, we did at uh, Excel. Yeah. And that really created a whole new category of mm. opportunity and why we've got so many um, people on PSA in New Zealand relative to our playing base. Yeah, um, for sure. But, so that gives people an opportunity to get points and win some matches. But realistically, if they were just fives and tens pre-COVID, you'd play for a year and not win a match, potentially. Pretty grim thinking, yeah. isn't it? I you think know? just back on that satellite and, and PSA thing in New Zealand, yeah, you're 100% right. I think one thing is I, I bet the players in New Zealand probably don't know how lucky they are right now yeah. to be yeah. having tournament yeah. after tournament after tournament. If yeah. you put these tournaments, same exact level, same prize money, mm. in England or, or probably any country in the world right now, the players would be unbelievably happy, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so I think that's probably one thing just for the players, you know, not to take that stuff for granted because this isn't happening anywhere else in the world as far as I'm aware. Um, no, I mean, Australia have just started catching up um, in terms of putting some events on, but they've been very, very slow off the mark. Yeah. The UK, they've just started to put on a bunch of threes, these half price threes. Yeah. Um, if you, I don't know if you're following it as closely. Yeah, yeah I've seen a little bit. But yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a few and historically they haven't done many. Yeah. Um, but you go to other parts of the world and, and there's, there's nothing going on. No. And I, I guess the real test for the New Zealand squash is, um, and this is a real challenge for um, Squash New Zealand, is what's going to happen next year, mm. right? Because you're not going to have all these half price, presumably, events. Um, what are they going to do to build on the momentum that is currently there with good viewership, lots of tournaments, yeah. lots of enthusiasm? You know what I mean? That's that's yeah. a huge. That's a rhetorical question. Yeah. I'm not expecting you to answer that because no, nobody knows. It's a but yeah. that that will be quite interesting. And then if a few of the players are overseas and maybe the levels are a little little lower, or maybe they will pull players from Australia and around the world if they put on fives plus. Yeah. Um, you know, it'd be quite interesting. I think one thing is they need to take advantage of it of of the players that are here right now. Yep. Because this isn't always the case where how many like how many New Zealand players are on PSA right now? Yeah. There's, there's a good a bunch yeah. of them, isn't yeah, there's, it? There's a lot. Not that necessarily everyone is actually playing one hundred percent full time. Yeah. But for someone to pay a PSA membership and turn turn up to all these tournaments, that's pretty good. That's showing a good bit of interest, you know. So I think New Zealand squash really needs to need to um need to capture their audience right now and, and do as much as they can for these players. It's I'd see both sides. It's tricky. It's not like New Zealand squash has 30 people working for them in an yeah, unlimited yeah, budget. Right. Yeah, yeah. So on the other hand, it comes down to districts and clubs as well, putting their hands up and um, and wanting to make things happen as well. I think as long as they're given a bit of guidance, then like clubs are showing interest right now, aren't they? Yeah. Judging yeah. by how many tournaments we're having, I'm guessing New Zealand squash isn't funding every single tournament. No, I mean, um, look, generally, um, they, they chuck a little bit in, but yeah. um, the clubs are finding the money and they're finding the sponsors. Um, and We're lucky uh, with squash. Yeah. There's, there's like so many clubs, they're their own community, aren't they? Yeah. Like Henderson Squash, my club, for example, is like it's a, such a family club and there's so many yeah. um, members from the club that sponsor the club, that sponsor tournaments, that get behind it, yeah, which is great. And I know there's a lot of other clubs like that around New Zealand. So I think as long as they know exactly what's needed early enough, um, then things can hopefully continue. Yeah, I mean they have to be worked. Continue I mean people, yeah. people that are responsible for running um, the overall uh, PSA events need to understand that these sponsors need to be thanked. Um, yeah. I had a huge rant last year to the new CEO when um, the previous version of the Pamio Technofiber Open, um, which was a satellite, yeah. got zero coverage from Squash New Zealand. Yeah. And I absolutely sent him the dirtiest email um, that I possibly could to say that it wasn't good enough. Can you enough. show that on? <laughs> um, yeah, I've got it. I've got it actually. Yeah, don't but bother, don't um, yeah, um, but no, the thing is, because what I said to, to him, I said, look, the, the, Every, every sponsor that puts on a tournament yeah. saves you, let's say, $10,000. Yeah. Because that's what it's going to cost you to pay your live streaming crew. That's what it's going to cost you to pay your staff to turn up on the weekend to run the events. Yeah. Um, yeah. Half of it is going to be prize money that you would otherwise have to find mm -hmm. because ultimately um, you do see it as a strategic ob objective to develop high-performance players and they have to compete to develop yeah. Um, 
so you, you should be groveling to these dudes and thanking them individually after every event because yeah. the benefit to you as, as a national body is massive. It's huge, yeah. I think, uh, and we're not doing yeah. that. You know, we should be yeah. doing that. Yeah, that's definitely something that can be improved for sure. I think the key is it's not about, it's like what you said before, what's going to happen next year. Yeah. If the people aren't thanked, if it's not done right, nothing happens next year. You know, yeah, that's it's right. about these, yeah. and that's what you want to create is you want to create the same events happening next year and everyone just improving the level, improving the, um, the prize money, potentially yep. improving right. in these tournaments. Because I can imagine the tournaments, like I haven't heard any bad, bad feedback from clubs in terms of they didn't enjoy the squash. Yeah, you yeah. Know, and if they yeah. enjoy the squash and they want it back next year, hopefully they know what's you know what's needed. But yeah, like we said, they the sponsors sponsors need to be thanked, don't they? For sure. Yeah, they do. It needs um, to be professional. Yeah. No, like I agree. I mean, it was interesting. We did um, um, we did a three cat Morrinsville a month or so ago. Yeah. And um, the club was actually absolutely booming because it's a small club. Yeah, yeah. Um, with um, three or four courts and. Um, Me and Lamba did an exhibition there. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, their main court's a lovely court, actually. Yeah, that's uh, good. but it it's off good, to the side. Yeah, but a great court. What was interesting there was that, um, uh, and, and it's typical of ninety nine percent of the clubs we go to, is that um, clubs are busy with the tournament. But when they've got the top players there, as well, everyone grows six inches uh, yeah, in height. Sure. That is, and um, you know they're they're excited to have everybody there, yeah. and they feel good about their club. <laughs> and as long as they've got a sponsor and the club's yeah. not losing money, they generally make money over the bar. And as long as they get all that stuff sorted and they communicate with everybody, they generally come out of it and the club sort of rides a wave of enthusiasm for mm. six to 12 months after that. Um, and so one of the good things about that too is, and some of the other events, is that there's a few people that are a bit negative about this focus on PSA, but they've sort of realised actually um, it can work. And then we had a huge event, uh, another one in Waikato, the Waikato uh, Open, yeah. uh, two weeks ago. Uh, and that was huge. I mean, the refs were continuously telling the crowd to shut up. They're making so much noise. Yeah, I watched a bit of the live show. <laughs> mostly. Too. I watched that. Mostly, yeah. I'm not sure they were talking about the squash. Old Dave Worsley and but in any Sean event, or something. Yeah, yeah. But in any event, the crowd noise was pretty good. So, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, actually probably what they could have done was on that Saturday night um, is um, had a bit of a party or a band or something because it was pretty... That's pretty probably busy. something missing yeah. right now. And yeah. I think um, yeah. for all the clubs out there. That's something to take advantage of. Is, and that's what I feel used to happen a lot more. Maybe it's just yeah. when I was younger, I thought it was happening. But I'm pretty sure the Saturday nights in general used to be pretty booming at squash clubs. I don't yeah. know how they do it. You probably know this better than me. I guess it's dependent on numbers. But yeah. Saturday finishes are great, aren't they? When they're possible. Yeah, yeah, but it's, yeah. it's, not, yeah. it's not easy, and I understand. No, you, no, it, you it know, is. You don't I, want to cut yeah, numbers yeah. on your tournament just yeah. to have a party. But if they can potentially do, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or I don't know how the players probably won't like it, but like a Friday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday for yeah. PSA. Yeah. You know, yeah. maybe it'll create more of a buzz, gives players a better opportunity to to meet, you know, people from the club because you're just there fully for two days. Yeah. And even more importantly, it gives, um, it gives the players from the club, you know, a time to meet all the players. The, yeah, the, that's right. The pros, yeah. You know, which yeah, that's is, right. Which is well, crucial. most of the pros, there's a few exceptions and we know, we know them well. Um, are generally pretty uh, friendly and pretty yeah. popular actually once people uh, yeah. get, once a chance you get to know them not yeah. so bad are they? <laughs> well, a couple of them so, there's a couple that have got a few uh, <laughs> prickly dice, edges but that's dice, okay yeah, yeah. Um, and then obviously different uh, different likes and interests um, okay so look just going back to that transition from junior to pro we talked about how hard it is with the training and, and stuff like that yeah um, I mean this is this is not a mean question necessarily but People can always say they would do things differently, or they may not do anything things differently. But what what did you learn from your experience? Because, um, he, you know, when you went to the UK, you probably when when did you go about like twenty two years old or something like that. Twenty one. Okay. Um, and what you know, like, because it's pretty tough, right? You go over there, yeah, and the yeah. scene over there is super tough. You've got um, players with true world rankings um, that you're coming up against. So a one fifty in the world is a genuine one fifty, and yeah. it's not a um, you yeah. know, I've been lucky getting into a 10k in yeah. Australia 150, and um, and then you've got all these old dudes, retired dudes who are uh, pretty mean. And if you've had a hard day's training, yeah. they can pick you off, kind They'll of chop you up on the old <laughs> yeah. Wednesday night yeah, league. I mean, and sure. then um, yeah, and then you've got to find a place to live, and uh, you've got to find a training base and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's pretty tough. Obviously, it's great because there's lots of players there, lots yeah. of good coaches yeah. and stuff like that. But is there anything that you sort of take out of that that you would say to players coming through or to administrators yeah um oh 100 that's that's a great question i think 
the main thing for me, there's a couple of things. I would never change anything, but if I was to start my life again, I'd do things differently. Sure, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, I don't regret anything with my career, but I, looking back, 100%, I could do loads better, you know? Um, I think having a base is potentially the most important thing. If you're not getting those daily hits with good players, it's just so hard to get that level. Um, I think in any sport around the world, like rugby and you, you know New Zealand dominates, we have the numbers. Yeah, that's right. It's a numbers game in the end, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and like Egypt right now, they're just seeing the top players. They they're getting to hit with them now and then, and all of a sudden they are a top player. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's gonna be. I mean, it's, it's so tricky from here. I think because. If I was squash New Zealand, for example, like I want the I want my top players to go overseas and get the experience, but on the other hand, when those top players go, you've got the next ones that are all of a sudden the top players here. Yeah, it's, there's a big gap. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's such a tricky one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I think finding a good base. I think contacts. Yeah. Is is probably underrated. You yeah. Don't know yeah. who who you know. Yeah. Or your who they know who yeah. the people you know who who they know. I think that really needs to be taken advantage of probably more. Um, because for accommodation, for example, like that adds up real quick. Yeah, it does for yeah. a cost. But yeah. who knows? You know, might you might have a friend that has an auntie over there, and all of a sudden you have a place to stay. Yeah. Um, and even in terms of the coaches, not all the best coaches are looking to work with other players. But if you know someone, you know what I mean. Everything yeah. becomes a lot yeah. easier. Yeah. Um, I know Paul went across uh, to Holland or whatever um, by himself. Yeah. And obviously he's done unbelievable, but. For me, I I enjoyed having me and um, Ben Grandrod went across for yeah yeah for three months I think it was and it was great for me having another person there. So uh, my own recommendation is you know if you if there is someone else that you can potentially go with yeah in terms of fun like it makes everything so much more fun. Yeah, I can understand um, that. Yeah, but in terms of yeah, the main thing for me is is a good base and a good coach. Yeah, I think on top of that doesn't necessarily have to be someone over there. It could be could be a dad, could be a friend, could be whoever. Having a good mentor, I think, is yep. such a key thing, and I've had a good, yep. a lot of you know, good older friends that have really helped me out with that. And just yep. being able to call someone, um, or just having someone that you know has your back, I think is is probably underrated as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, could, you you didn't get the squash house in Halifax, did you? That was before. No, that you was a few years. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. It would have been great. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure that you know the people running it back then, looking back, would say, "Oh, I wish we still had the house." Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, getting accommodation, getting a good base, having a good coach over there is um, a, a massive thing. The other thing, looking back at it, financially was probably the biggest reason for me that I didn't go earlier. But in saying that, it could be it could be an excuse, really. I could probably look back now and say, well, what if I put in more work? What if I ask more people, you know? It's a difficult decision, I think. It's a difficult um, one, yeah. yeah. I think people will say, you go too early or you go too late. No yeah. one's going to say, oh, man, you went at the perfect time, perfect didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Paul who's going to say that? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but, you know? but I mean, like, even for me, like, for those last couple of years before I left, the majority of people, top guys here, had actually already gone. Yeah. So probably from, I want to say 19, 20, a good couple of years, I probably didn't really do anything with my squash to be honest yeah you know yeah, there was yeah. before that i was lucky 15 16 17 18 there was me paul would come up martin campbell cash yeah. alice grace and louis sider cameron jameson like there was like eight amazing players yeah all training together at unitech yeah um anthony rickers was our coach so we had a full-time coach that had done it all yeah um we had a trainer um greg yeah. owens then tony marsh yeah like five days a week, 7 a.m. Any questions you had, text them, call them whenever. You yeah, know? yeah. Two hits a day. Um, yeah, yeah. So, like, where do you find that right now? You don't find yeah, that, those right. kind of bases. Like, no, that's right. I mean, I think... Almost um, in the world, let alone, yeah, like, yeah. 15 minutes from my house. Yeah, that's right. I, I mean, yeah, well, they do exist, obviously, but um, not... not um, it, well, in different ways. I mean, for example, um, the guys... We're, we're looking at going to Sheffield maybe later in the year, and yeah. the setup there is kind of 50-50, really. It's half sessions... Half of the... Half of your normal sessions are taken up by group sessions. Yeah. And then the rest of the time, you've got to find your own thing to do, which is yeah. fine because you want to travel around to other clubs. Yeah. So there's other guys. They play leagues with. and yeah. there's different coaches. Exactly. Yeah, so that's that. about right, like a half schedule. But then that's with a lot of other things going on. Certainly in, in New Zealand and what we ran at Excel for a period of time was um, 12 sessions a week, um, yeah. which is what players need to do. Um, 
let's be honest about it. Um, and it, it's, it's, uh, I don't see that happening in, in New Zealand. I don't see us getting a full-time coach. If they do, I actually think yeah. it would be a mistake because there's actually, I, I won't rant on about that. Um, I don't see them doing uh, a training environment. Uh, I don't think they can afford to do it. I don't know what your view is. Yeah, I'm probably not the same there. I think it'll be good if they had a full-time coach at some stage. I don't think it's going to happen though. Yeah. Because yeah. like if you had $100,000 right now, yeah. would you put that into having one coach yeah. when everyone is separated all around the country? You yeah, know what I mean? exactly. Yeah. I would probably say it's more important that there was actually a base. So whether that money went into some accommodation or went into something, yeah. that all of our players were actually training together. Because right now, I mean, Evans at Wellington, he's not going to leave. Obviously, he's all or he's all set. Yeah. Um, Chalice is there in Hamilton. Yeah. Joel's in Remuera. Yeah. Wills in Gizio, um, Taupo, and yeah. Like everyone's just in different areas, isn't it? Yeah. So just to have one coach in one certain area probably doesn't fit. Um, right yeah, it's now. difficult to say. I I think that if if there was, um, if the players were motivated to move, they might move. Um, yeah, you I know, mean maybe they would yeah. move for the right coach. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. there's but a couple out there. But everything would have to fit. I mean, the thing for my guys now is they wouldn't move for a coach. Yeah, exactly. Um, for a bunch of reasons which I won't go into. Yeah, and and they're it's they're, more they're about to shoot off anyway. Exactly. It's, it's for that next. It's probably more yeah. important really for those ones. Now they're getting you know to twenty twenty one. Yeah it's probably more important that they just get overseas. But then, like I said, that does leave the gap, doesn't it? No, it does. It yeah, leaves yeah. the gap for the next players. Yeah. But if I was them being selfish, 100%, I'd be looking to... Um, yeah, I, I think, to personally, to you know, now. there were certain things we tried to put in place um, uh, a couple of years ago that were yeah. kiboshed that meant that players could go backwards and forwards, um, yeah. which I think in the early stages, when you're outside the top 50 in the world, mm. you have to come back to New Zealand anyway for Nats and for the events that are run here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and well, there's could enough you, tournaments back here for yeah. your level, isn't and it? And then so the question is, could you come back a little more often and stay a little bit longer? Well, you could if certain things were done. And again, they don't necessarily involve spending more money. Yeah. It just means using them and giving them uh, a support base. So it means paying them to hit with um, the junior squads rather than having an assistant coach sitting around doing nothing and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. So it doesn't involve any more money. It just, it's just um, the will, the political will of Squash New Zealand to do stuff like that, which they don't have at the moment. Um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting couple years. I would love something to change, but I think for change to happen, for big change to happen, I think there's probably going to need a private funder, which who knows? Yeah. There might be someone out there that would hand it, you know? Yeah. Give a couple yeah. of hundred thousand to, to if they really wanted to see squash make a huge change yeah. and if you're out there get in touch um yeah i mean i'd like to think so to personally i can't yeah. see anyone being mad enough to do that no. um because to be honest with you you'd be giving money to people that don't know what they're doing yeah. um and that that is a problem yeah. um but it would yeah. be nice and i agree with you hopefully um someone out there will will um uh, will end up probably doing on that. that topic to be honest like i've spoken to a few people recently and I guess for myself as well, like being a pro being a player that had nothing really, you know, nothing yeah. financially. I was lucky enough that I was doing okay in some tournaments, and and I had a couple of sponsors here and there that would help me out. Which, without that, I wouldn't have been able to do, you know, half the things that I was doing, and a lot of support from my squash club in particular. Yeah. But over the next couple of months, couple of years, you know, I, I would I'll one hundred percent be um, looking to fund some players and give a little bit of money where I can, you know, and I think. After talking to a few um, a few people, like there's people out there that would do yeah, yeah, the same, and yeah. I've spoken to a couple of the players, um, and said like, just put yourself out there, mm. you know. Mm. Like yeah, I said, there yeah. there's people that that mm. will I I think there's people that are out there that will give money, but they're not just gonna realistically they're not just gonna come and say here's two grand. Yeah, yeah. So I guess for those players that are trying to come up, that's probably something that I'd change about myself as well. Even though I was a little bit like that, I could have been better. Yeah. At asking, you know, yeah. put yourself out there as much yeah. as you can because you might get nine no's and then you get one yes and all of a sudden that's a trip paid for somewhere, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it is the reality. You're going to get more no's than yeses, but that's true yeah. if, you if you know, want it bad any kind of funding. Yeah. 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 yeah, It's not easy. No yeah. one really likes asking for money, do they? You know? Yeah. No yeah. one really likes going up to someone and saying, oh, this, these are my goals, this is what I'm doing. But yeah. it's otherwise, like I said for myself, it's probably my excuse, you know, for not going two years earlier where if I was to start again, I would probably try to go when I was 19. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because at that stage right. there wasn't the other players here, so I didn't really have well, a there bunch of players that I was still improving either, with, and there wasn't there. the events. Yeah, there. like yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, we sort of work on a scenario that a uh, um, sort of not not a junior, but a, a first year pro should be getting to like two fifty in the world after the first year of playing, and that yeah. that could involve not actually winning any events, but it just means playing. So they turn up to the up events. Points, they're gonna they're turn gonna up, play your thirteen events, yeah. um, have a bit of a luck, you know, get get drawn against a, a, a local. Um, wild card Ex-pro. or something yeah yeah <laughs> Ooh, um, and, and, and get your lucky win kind of thing yeah um, but otherwise just accumulate your points yeah. um, and a couple of years ago and, and this year um, people can do that people yeah. can actually do that here in New Zealand whereas before the, you couldn't yeah it means yeah. that you're going to go overseas and get into tournaments isn't it yeah because now that there's no qualifying mm. like I know for a little bit anyway there was a bunch of people on the reserve list so then they just missed out full stop in the yeah. tournament where right. from New Zealand you've got that ability to get the, the ranking in there yeah which I know like in England for for example there's a bunch of guys 350 in the world that would love to be 200 in the world because it yeah. means they're getting into tournaments so our guys have that luxury right now of having the ability to get to 200 in the world ish I guess yeah without necessarily well they don't need to go far they don't need to spend much money yeah that's right but they might not potentially be that level you know around the world but it means that they get into events which is huge yeah that's right uh, um that it's very very important it's hard to um get support it's hard to go anywhere where if your world ranking's not improving it's yeah. hard to get into events it's hard to go to a coach and say please coach me mm. um when you're not creating any kind of um attractiveness about where you're headed and what you're doing yeah um so there's a whole bunch of different things going on there i agree with that i mean i remember when um Luama did his first trip to australia and he played um Nick Calvert at um, Carrara, and yeah, then he so lost cool. in three there, and then he lost yeah. to um, the Filipino guy, um, Robert Garcia. Garcia. Yeah, Pretty yeah, too, yeah. Right? that's right, in, in Northern right. Territory. And that yeah. trip cost him like $2,000, yeah. and he got two losses out of it. And, and we're I watching, think, weren't we? <laughs> yeah, and, but I think, you know, like, I mean, obviously he's a fairly resilient kind of a guy, but yeah, there would be exactly. a lot of people that would say, I spent two grand, I didn't win a game, yeah. I'm tapping out, I'm done. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh. But he had a lot of support from his family, obviously from yourself, myself, mm. and um, it was just a bump on the road as far as we were concerned. And well, I think he went back, he was didn't concerned. he beat Nick, like, very level, he beat Nick, didn't he? He beat Nick 3-1 in, in Palmy um, yeah. six to eight months later, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was pretty dominant. Um, but he came back yeah. from that trip, like, very positive, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, ready to train, ready to do more rather than the opposite. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So. yeah, I mean, look, a lot of those events in the UK, um, they're cutting off at 150 for a 5K. Yeah, oh, some you of know? the draws. I mean, it's just a joke. Jesus. Yeah, it's ridiculous, you know? Yeah. Um, so th- that's kind of the level you need to be. So the one um, in France now, eh? Rio just won, beat Sebastian. Yeah, he did, yeah. 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 yeah, he's doing well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but even first round, like some of the first rounds, I was like, jeepers, they could potentially be making finals. Yeah. And our tournaments, and they could be right. stitched up first round. But that's just how it is, isn't it? Yeah, we've got to take advantage of that. Yeah, sometimes our events are a bit soft. Mm. Um, then sometimes they're quite difficult. I mean, if, if they put something on... It's tricky for the guys yeah. right now, you know. I feel sorry for a bunch of them because they want to go overseas. It's not like they don't want to do it, you know mm. what I mean? They're ready, they want to do it, but the world hasn't been open enough. Yeah, that's right. So unfortunately, they, that hasn't been an option. But I know that's going to happen pretty soon, isn't it? Yeah, let's hope so. Um, yeah, certainly we're planning to go uh, to Aussie end of July. Will that be the three um, boys? Yeah, and, and, well, that, yeah, that's for, for Aus for a month, five oh, weeks. Oz for July, right. Yeah, um, so that's uh, uh, bigger as, as the Aussie Open, then um, Shepparton is the next week, and then there's a, a local Rockhampton hmm. satellite, might become a 3K, and then Coffs is a 3K. Is Mason um, looking to go to those? Isn't Mason's it? already yeah. entered, yeah. So he's going to go, which is yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, no one else has entered uh, yet from New Zealand. Is it, is it um, um, no one else has entered from New Zealand yet, but um, right. hopefully uh, some of the guys will. Um, I mean, going back to something we said earlier, you know, there's a lot of people that are not entering these events, guys and girls, mm-hmm. and they are absolutely dumb because yeah. next year when they want to get into a tournament and they can't because their yeah. ranking's not high enough, um, you know, I'm going to be there reminding them that they should have played that event because they would have got in. That's the thing is the you opportunity know? might not always be here. You know yeah. what I mean? If, you know? I know for your guys in particular, if they're going overseas and you look to go overseas with them, like I know you've been a big driver for the tournaments recently, so are they going to keep happening? You know what I mean? Yeah, or are yeah, you going sure. to look to do the yeah. things at the same level or are you going yeah. to be thinking, exactly. oh, maybe two 25Ks 
you know, what if these boys were to improve or are you just looking overseas? So the tournaments not, might not always be here. So why you have the opportunity yeah. to get that ranking to the top 200, really? Yeah. Take advantage of it. Yeah, it, it's quite... Um, um, I found it quite funny that there's certain groups in, in New Zealand that are very anti-PSA um, and uh, coaches and um, districts and things like that. And um, it comes from a position of ignorance because they really don't know how it works. Um, and they're doing a disservice to their players because um, yeah. you've got guys not entering events. Oh, you know, he doesn't feel like playing that week. Um, if you are a pro, you plan your year. You look at the calendar, you plan your year, you pick the events um, that are important. You certainly plan events where the points are soft, where the field's weak, um, and you maximize your ranking. That's one thing that is very, very easy to do and one thing that you have to do, right? Let's be honest about it. And just to, to sit around and say, oh, well, no, you know, didn't want to play that weekend. Um, it's just absolutely I think nuts. The other, one of the other biggest things with that, and all the, like, all the boys now, they're all my good mates and stuff, so I sure. can kind of give them shit whenever I want. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You might have a different opinion for yeah, this, sure. but like, there's tournaments, $750 for first, Yeah. that a lot of the boys aren't playing. Yeah, yeah. Taking yeah. advantage. I, know, yeah. I understand that you want to focus on the 5Ks yeah, yeah, and yeah, all that, yeah. but realistically, if you can go and make $750 this weekend but you don't want to play because you you want to rest you know what I mean especially mm. if you only have two games the week before yeah like, yeah, that's yeah. money that's money for jam just no no I agree with that I, I think not that you don't um, play every single weekend yeah, but yeah. it's easy money isn't it not easy yeah. money but it's money <laughs> like no I think I mean I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you I mean the guys played um, um, Joel and Tim were played Hoon Bay straight after um, yeah, true, yeah. doubles and yeah. Louis played um, Tim's Teams, yeah. Um, so, no, I, I don't have a problem with that. It's just really, um, um, you, we have got a situation now where we've got potentially 10 weeks in a row leading into nationals. Yeah, Because yeah. they're talking about putting on an event before nationals. Um, oh, yeah. And it, it, to expect guys to play 10 weeks in a row, yeah. and my guys are going to go deep. And if they don't go deep, yeah. they're going to play three games, and their third game is going to be a one-hour five-setter, mm. uh, generally. They're not going to go out with a whimper. How long was Joel um, with Louis on the weekend? Uh, you know, I'm 45 probably something. You know, it's, it's decent. Yeah, you know? yeah, I um, So I mean, Joel's actually into Browns Bay. I, um, Did he? Yeah, he has. Yeah, I told him to enter it, but um, last minute, Shit. my wife talked me into it actually. Um, but I was going to say, no, that's good. Um, I like it. But I, no, I agree with you. I, I mean, the thing is, these guys they have to do their training. Um, they can play these local opens, and it's stress free. Exactly. Um, and um, where well, it's, it's just match play, isn't it? Like, yeah. It's exactly. That's the thing. And they do match play anyway. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. The hardest thing with some of the tournaments is that they won't, it's not a decent training week for them. And then if yeah. they're traveling to the event, they don't make up the miss sessions. And so the idea of yeah. keeping their volume up is hard to do. It just doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, That's so the trick for everyone. The one with playing teams, I mean, you know, it's too far from home. You couldn't drive to and from, go home, do a session. You, yeah. you know what I mean? So you're kind of losing a couple of days um, yeah, training, yeah. which. Um, you know, because the guys, it's a, tr- it's a tricky thing to do. Well, it's difficult it, so. for our guys because yeah. we're focused on them getting better by by nationals. You yeah. know, so they can't just play between um, when we started in um, Morrinsville yeah, or, or yeah. Waikato, sorry, all the way through. They can't just play and rest. Yeah. That they're still trying to, to get I'll their let volume up for that. Yeah, no, no, no. But I mean, but you know, Joel's playing this one. I mean, yeah, yeah. realistically. Um, could they play more events? Yeah, they could. I mean, definitely they should play. They could play some local events for good money. I guess yeah. it's true though. Once there's something every single weekend, you do need a week enough. You're not going to play ten in a row. Are you? You're going to have. It's, you're going to pick something for yeah. a gap. I mean, the problem is that it's kind of um, it's a little tricky with these younger guys. Like, yeah. say yourself, um, even being a little bit older, you kind of know that you can go bang, 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 and, and that's not going to tire you out yeah. mentally. Yeah, um, exactly. Because I'm not too worried about the guys physically. It's more a no. case, because the last thing you want to do is you get to um, nationals and they're, you're over it. they're not fresh. Yeah. They're not mentally fresh. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you're like, hmm, um, it's too late to do anything. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, I don't want to do match analysis. I don't feel like training. Uh, they won't say that, obviously, but yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, um, so it's, it's a little tricky. No, I, I don't disagree with you. Um, yeah. Look, there's, a, there's obviously this politics as well. Um, yeah. Some events they're not going to play. Yeah, the prize money is okay, but they should get paid more than that to play. Yeah. So they're not going to play that. Yeah, event. yeah. Uh, some events we've told people, please boost the event and we'll play it. Yeah. And it only meant they had to 
get a couple of hundred bucks in prize money and they refused so we didn't play oh I think um, that's fair enough you know what I mean yeah yeah, yeah. in terms of and, that and, yeah. Uh, good point yeah. you know and so, so and last weekend that's what happened so, last weekend yeah. guys didn't play last weekend why um, they could have turned it into a 3k for a few hundred bucks they chose not to do it mm. real simple yeah and that's fair yeah. enough to be yeah. honest yeah um, yeah so otherwise I, yeah uh, I think that's yeah. the players are worth something you know yeah, you got to put. And you have to value. Otherwise, put you a value on yourself. Yeah, you I know, know that better. Yeah, you used I, to do that. You still yeah, do it, for right? Sure. You know, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that's part of sure. it. Um, what What are we going to get onto next? So, um, what's your sort of prediction then for um, the short term future for New Zealand high performance squash? Like, um, what What's your prediction of players coming through? How do you think they're going to do? Uh, obviously, um, you got my three guys, but some of the other guys. Um, what do you think about the depth or strength in juniors? Um, uh, obviously, Paul's around for a bit. What, Paul th- turned 31 the other day? 29. 29 is, oh, that's right, it is 29. 29, yeah, I'm yeah, 28. Yeah. Six months old. Well, yeah, I know, I've been on 31, otherwise I'm 30. Yeah, I know. Well, it, it'll sneak up on your brain before you know, know it. But, um, no, seriously, what's your thoughts anyway? Um, obviously, we won't talk about the woman because that's, that's, <laughs> that's far um, too hard. Yeah, I think in terms of the guys, yeah, obviously... I'd probably say Tim is probably having the standout year realistically right now, isn't he? He's been yep. in Louis three times. Yeah. Yeah. Has he lost to anyone other than Evan? No. Other than Louis once. Yeah. But he's obviously the informed player. I think last year yep. Luambo was clearly the informed player. Yep. Um, Wills has had a few good tournaments. Obviously not as good on the weekend just yep. then, but Finn's a good player as well. So. Um, well, I'm going to jump in there, and I'm going to say that Wills isn't playing enough. So I, I did a summary um, a couple of weeks ago, and I did it was the series from the Barfoot series all the way through to Morrinsville. Yeah. And I did the top eight players, and they were the players that got the most PSA points out of that series. And Wills was definitely one of the best eight players, yeah, but yeah. he didn't feature on that list because he only played half the events. Yeah. Um, and uh, so in my view, he's not playing enough, mm. and then he's not consistent enough when he is playing um, and um, uh, so I guess it's up to his team to, to address that because yeah. um, if he's only going to play half the events then he's got to do way better in all of them and be way more consistent uh, because he's fresher because the other guys are doing as well or better playing all of them yeah yeah no I think, yeah yeah I 100% there was a couple of tournaments I know that didn't play early in the year um, yeah I, I haven't spoken to him as much recently so I don't know his goals if he's trying to play for, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 100% yeah. full time yeah, yeah. I, I know that he was minus the weekend just gone he, he had some great results you know yeah no he like has yeah. where I like yeah. a few good ones um, but yeah. obviously if he's playing full time then yeah he should play the, all the tournaments really. yeah yeah I mean, <laughs> same as what yeah. I just said before isn't it yeah. like play the tournaments yeah. well no it's, it's just simply that if you want to be say I'm in the same group as these guys or I'm competing for a spot in the New Zealand team um, then you know, you can't be considered, if, in my view, if you're not doing the events. I guess, I guess in terms of that, one person that I'd have to give credit to is Mason. Because yeah, I think yeah, Mason's yeah. played just about every single weekend, yeah, he hasn't is, he? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And he's only 16, and I get it sometimes he's only going to have the one match. I yeah. know that they've, they've had a few plates and stuff, but he's probably one of the biggest improvers over the last four months. Like I said, it might not show necessarily in, in all the PSA matches because... No, I agree he's 16 yeah, and he's playing yeah. some of the top guys in New Zealand but I, I mean you're know, biased like, right the, you're biased because you're hitting with him right and you're going to take the yeah. credit for it I'm but, biased I'd be, <laughs> yeah. I'd be the nicest to him but I'd probably be the roughest to him as well to be fair yeah you know yeah. Um, I was definitely giving him a hard time giving him advice but giving him a hard time over summer you know he's wanting to go pro and I said well, what's your training schedule you know yeah, 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 I remember this conversation as well. And he said, yeah. "What he did?" And he said, oh, "I had it with my dad and yeah. all this." And I was saying, well, "Was that going to get you to your yeah. goals?" And he yeah. kind of looked at me. And then, um, but since then, he's had some great wins, and he's turning up. You know, he's turning up week after week. Yeah, um, it's a big part of it. So full credit to yeah. him. Yeah. I mean, I, I did an Instagram story about a month ago, um, which was that table sum- summary, and I gave him credit because he was sixth or seventh out of the out of the eight. And yeah. obviously, he wasn't one of the best eight players at that stage because of his age and everything else. Yeah. But it was exactly that. He he played every event, um, and he'd maximised his points, and he's ranked above uh, a few players that probably think they're better than him. Um, but they haven't been as consistent yeah. and as professional in the way they've organised themselves. 
So I think, and you can definitely see that he's improved. He's got a long way to go. Yeah. Um, he's definitely volleying a lot more. Yeah, um, yeah. he's getting there. Yeah, he, you know, he's getting there. I, I think it's it, tough, yeah. going back to what we said before yeah, about daily yeah. training environment. I mean, the kid is, well, and Auckland seems like a good place to train because yeah. there's lots of guys up here. But realistically, it's not a great training environment. No. Because you've got to go, you go that club for that, and then you go that club for that, and then yeah, you yeah. go over there to be a trainer, and yeah. your coach is over there. So you spend, um, what, five or six hours in a car every yeah. week, yeah. stuck in traffic, going from A to B to C. Um, and for someone like uh, Mason, you know, yes, his parents and his coach, he's got a lot of people involved, yeah. but no one's really accountable no. overall mm. for everything. You know, everyone's got their own little, you know, the coach does that and the trainer yeah, does that. Yeah, yeah. The parents do that and, you know, you hit with them and everyone, everyone's supporting and helping mm. him. But there's no sort of overarching person saying, um, does, does this make sense? Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I had a chat this morning with um, uh, Shelley actually about it and I said, you know, I admire the dude for turning up and playing all these events. Mm. But he's struggling to be consistent in all of them. Like he was, yeah. he was terrible at NZJO, great at Waikato. Um, great at Devoy, pretty bad at um, Pam Muir. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah, and yeah. that happens to a young guy. Oh, I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. But I just sort of said that, you know, like, um, um, I said to her, look, give him a few Tuesdays off, you know, or, or get him to do something else, mm. you know, just, just so he's hungry all the time. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And make sure he gets that kind of support. Um, I think, I, I'm biased, but I think my guys, they're always challenging each other. Um, and so they, they have a bad loss yesterday, a bad loss. Yeah. Um, but then they're, they're just as hungry to, to have another shot. Yeah, that's what you I know? said before about a mentor. Like having that support is pretty crucial, isn't it? Yeah. But um, yeah, other than him, there's a couple of guys. Like obviously Elijah got injured. And yeah, that's yeah, again yeah, someone yeah. that I was hitting with yeah, yeah. when I was hitting more than once a week over the summer. So what did you do to him? <laughs> a few holds. <laughs> 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 no, but he's... Um, and I said that, you know, late last year as well, that I think he's probably one of my standout players who I think is um, probably the nicest thing I've ever said about him or to him as well. <laughs> but I think he's going to go, I think he has potential to go yeah, far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. So I think he's obviously looking to come back in the next couple of weeks, I think. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes. Obviously, early in the year, he had a good one with Luamba. Yep. Um, Last year, but Timur a couple of times. I think he beat Joel once, maybe. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. So I think if he can get back into it, and then the other player is obviously Anthony Lepper. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, obviously a big injury as well, but like he's always tough. He's always tough for these boys, isn't he? Um, yeah. Him and Tim I know last year had some huge <coughs> matches. Yeah. Um, he was getting the better, but I think Tim I started to get the better of him. You know, look, mid yeah, to yeah, later yeah, in the year, yeah, but then that's right. Like Joel, I think. He manages, or he was always managing to, to beat Joel, so I know, yep. you know yep. that's going to be a good matchup now yeah, as well. Yeah, it should be, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, and one good thing, you know, for them is Joel moved up to Ramiro, obviously. Anthony trains there as well, so that's great. Mm. They're going to have each other to hit with because mm. Mm. there's not a load of great players around right now. You don't, you know, have a luxury of players that you can decide, oh, cool, I'll hit with you. Hit with yeah. you. So with yeah. Anthony and Elijah, two of Auckland's top players <clears throat> out, yeah, it's pretty tough, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty grim. Yeah. Yep. But, yeah, I mean, other than that, well, because, I mean, that's Auckland, right? Uh, that's the majority of the players are in yeah. Auckland, and it's grim. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I guess most people wouldn't realise that, but it is truly grim yeah. um, for the guys based in Auckland. It's not low. <clears throat> you know, and so, um, um, imagine how bad it is elsewhere. It's pretty tough. <clears throat> I think that's probably one reason I give hats off to Evan, you know? Yeah, because yeah. Because who was he? I think, <clears throat> obviously, Scott Galloway is a very talented player, but it's Scott's been working full-time for... 15 years you know he's been yeah. he's not training full time or anything like that no. so for him to still stay on top with like I don't know who he is but <coughs> I, guess, I guess Scott um, yeah I mean but, he can't have anyone yeah. hit to hit with in terms of um, match play yeah, yeah. obviously so now he that he's older it. if he was 20 now it'd be a different story but yeah. because he has all the experience That's right. it doesn't matter as much obviously for him but for those players coming through like you need the match play just yeah, and of course, you know, no... he's found a way to um, hold his level, um, and uh, and uh, as we said earlier, arguably raise it in the last two years. Yeah. Um, but I agree with you; it's quite different for a thirty-one-year-old guy to do that yeah. on his own, as opposed to a twenty-year-old who has no idea what they're doing anyway. Yeah, um, yeah. massive. Um, anyone else? It's kind of it is. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult to know. I know Matt and Gabe are playing a bit more, but they're not. 
like they they're focusing on going to college. I know they're working. Yeah. They're, yes. You know their hours are pretty difficult. I think in terms of training, but they're obviously not trying to play full time squash. No, um, no. So yeah. I mean, I also take them yeah, out of that category. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I don't think Gabe will play mm. anymore in New Zealand. If he does, I'll be surprised. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Matt. Matt's had a, a been in and out. It'd be yeah. interesting to see how he goes this weekend. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's playing too. But yeah, I mean, that's most of the players. You know, most of the top guys. Yep. Is anyone else? <clears throat> no, no, no. That's fair enough. I mean, there's obviously a few others, and there's some junior guys coming through. It'll be interesting to see how um, some of those other guys um, develop, um, because there is quite a gap yeah. from uh, top junior to um, sort of top 300 pro, isn't it? Let's be honest. And top 300 pro isn't that high. No, there's a big gap. It's, yeah. it's tough to um, it's tough to fill that gap as well, isn't it? Mm. Um, so what, just to change the subject, like what do you think is the level that, say, a Tim and a Louis are playing right now in a world ranking level? I mean, forget what their rankings are. Yeah. What would you put I at? would probably say in the mid-100s at a guess. Maybe slightly better. Maybe better than that. It's, it's tricky. It depends how I think about it. If I think about Aussie, if I compare it to England, you yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. when I think about some guys in England that are 150 in the world, I'm like, shit. They're bloody good players. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe around the top hundred. Obviously, they're getting very yeah. close to even. Yeah. So maybe I'm being tough there. You no, know? no, it that's might fair. be the low hundreds. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I'm excited to see them play these guys, um, out of New Zealand. You yeah. Know? I yeah. can't wait. I think yeah. obviously they can't wait. But I'd love to see them play guys. You know, 80s, 90s, hundred in the world. Yeah. To see how they match up. Yeah. Um, I think to get started, they might get a little bit of a shock potentially just because when you're not playing people at those levels that are so structured and so consistent yeah it's tricky you know you get you get to 20 minutes at five all in the first set and you're thinking gee because i'm not you they're just yeah. not used yeah, to it I so i think yeah. after a few months of that i think they're gonna um i think they'd lift their lift lift their level pretty quickly but i think obviously because tim was doing probably the best right now um take away evan i think I think for Louis, because he, he, I mean, he had such a good year last year, but he's just yep. not firing up quite the same this year. I think yep. he just needs that change up right now. I think he needs a little something different that's just going to give him that focus. Obviously, him and his brother live together. You know, they train yep. together every day, yep. and, and Tim was just pipping him at the moment. But yep. I think when they go overseas, because of his movement and his fitness and all of that, I think, I think he's yeah, there's a lot of potential. I think to potentially go far. You know, look, I think your reading of things is fair. Um, um, from the inside, the sort of like the trainer's approach. Yeah. Um, I, I personally believe Luama's level is higher than Thames, even though Thames has had a decent run of results. Yeah. Um, I don't think... I don't um, know whether there's something mental there. You know, yeah, like no, the last no match I watched yeah, with, yeah. with him yeah. and Tim yeah. yeah. Waikato, I don't know if there's anything other yeah. to that, but I watched yeah. that two love and I flicked off and then I flicked back on at 6-1 yeah. in the fourth to Tim yeah, Waikato. Exactly, and then yeah. the fifth was like, yeah. not his best squash I've ever seen. No, he hasn't... Um, there's been a couple of things um, that have been off, yeah. um, but then uh, Morrinsville was close to good. Um, then he's dropped off a little. Um, yeah. I, th- I think he's going to do well the next two months. He's definitely he's not losing uh, anyone else. You know what I mean? No, no, he's not. Ones. no. He's, he's yeah. just lost yeah. his brother a couple of yeah. times in five, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I can't imagine he'll be stoked about that. No, um, I mean it's definitely not the the script he put together. Yeah. Um, but hopefully that motivates him more though. And yeah. I think it will, you yeah. know, I think yeah. he'll get the spark again and, and all of a sudden he'll be very tough for anyone here to beat. Yeah. I mean, the thing is what, when we sort of, um, at the end of last year, before we were planning what we were going to do this year, um, I basically said to him, look, if you play the way you're playing now for the rest of your life and yeah. just get fitter, stronger, more experience, you will become a top hundred player. Yep. Oh, yeah. And, um, and, and I said for to sure. him, but, I don't think you'll become a top 50 player, right? If, yeah. if you do that. I said, yeah. you know, a year, two years from now, you might be beating Evan or whatever, or even regularly, if, if there's still COVID and pulls away, you might win a national title, but you're not going to crack the top 50 uh, the way that you play just by getting fitter, stronger, more experienced. Yeah. Uh, you're not. And obviously, racket skill comes as well. Of course yeah, it yeah. does. So then um, one of the reasons he's not playing so well this year is that he's still... He's made a few changes and he's trying to integrate those changes and it doesn't always work for him. Yeah. He's still figuring it out. Um, and there was a couple of little niggles in there as well. But yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this is the problem, I think. Um, and it's been quite challenging for him. And then, obviously, there's been a couple of mental things which he's working on as well. But, um, 
but I still think he's stronger than, than teams, and I agree with you. From an outsider's reading, what you said is absolutely 100% correct. Yeah. Teams has had a better season, and certainly relative to expectation. Yeah. He's a talented player. He's exciting well. player to watch, he's, he's, he's fun to watch. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. He's, I mean, he's got some good shots and all that, and he's, he's playing aggressive. I think Louis could actually probably take something from him yeah. Yeah. in terms of just a bit of the explosiveness. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think if, if Louis could get a little bit more pace on the ball and just up the speed of some things because he has the he has the fitness you know what I mean yeah, he, he does, is yeah. fast yeah. but he's just not putting it together perfect but yeah. that's the that's you know that's Tim's biggest strength is what I see right now it's just the aggression he's bringing to the game yeah. Um, yeah. and it's paying off isn't he it's yeah it is I mean is, yeah my, my sort of feeling is that the, 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 the level right now is 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 uh, good enough to um, win those matches against Evan they lack the experience professionalism yeah. consistency yeah. but there's not an issue around are they able to to do they have components in their game that are good enough i think i yeah. think they do i think if you can get Both a five with someone you can yeah. beat it it's, yeah. you know yeah. and um, um so it's very mental isn't it yeah it is and it evan's is. not yeah. going to let anyone beat him you know? no no he's not he's good i mean we're, he's going to make it as hard yeah. as possible that's right which is, yeah. so he should yeah, yeah which is great which is great um yeah, I mean, I think, um, so where do you see those guys ending up? I mean, obviously, they, they sort of would love to be top 50 and playing World Series and that kind of thing. Do you think that's, obviously, you cannot say someone is going to get there because of the amount of work and consistency, and you've yeah. got to be work hard, be consistent for year after year, week after week, day after day, for yeah. years and years and years to get there. But do you think there's a, any kind of glimmer of hope for them to sort of make yeah, that kind 100%. of level? Yeah, 100%. I think there's potential <laughs> there, you know. I think, and they're, they're all still young, aren't they? There's yeah, potential that's right. there. I think yeah. if they can get the right support, they can get in the right base, then there's a chance that they can do it. Yeah. You know, I think they can all be top 100 within the next two years, realistically. Um, some of them would be hoping for in the next 12 months. Obviously, it depends yeah. on that overseas stuff. And yes, obviously, right. if it's Sheffield, that wherever they decide to go, if it's if it's under Nick Matthew, you know, yeah. um, I think in particular for Louis, I can see that working really well. Yeah. Just his, his gameplay. Um, yeah. But yeah, who knows, definitely. you know, I think for Joel and Temwa, maybe that extra bit of structure and guidance, you know, with him might take them a long way as well. So I, I think, yeah, yeah there's, there's obviously the potential there. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they, how they react when there's so many other, obviously Louis had a little bit of experience now there. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how Temwa and Joel react to the level because they're going to turn up to leagues and there's going to be guys that are in their late 40s, 50 years old. Yeah that they probably get chopped up by. Yeah, it's, it could happen. Yeah. You know, and if they yeah. get down by that or if they yeah. get excited and they try to learn and all that, yeah. that's going to be such a big difference. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I think if they make the most of it, the opportunity is there, isn't it? Well, I mean, they've got a, a huge advantage. I mean, I know the guys talk to you when they need to and yeah. uh, they talk to me and they talk to a lot of different people. So they've got quite a lot of um, sort of sounding boards. Um, yeah. And Louis's been there before. Um, so the other two coming through always benefit from that. Um, and uh, actually, Louis got a decent number of contacts considering over there. Yeah. Um, so um, um, I think they should be able to manage that, but yeah. um, certainly you never know they're, until yeah. they're in the environment. No, absolutely. It's yeah. hard to know. Yeah. They might have three months and say it's just not for me. Yeah, the weather, yeah. Um, you know, the results. Yeah. Um, there's a whole bunch of things. Yeah, yeah. A couple of girlfriends for them as well. Yeah, in there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. It's, it gets very niggly um, when you start talking about that kind of stuff. Um, and then, the, so for those guys. Um, so world teams in, is going to be in Malaysia, um, and I've heard that we are going to men's teams. Yeah, is it? Um, so this Mal- year? Malaysia announced um, on their Instagram account about seven days ago um, mm-hmm. that they've been awarded men's teams. I heard that it was between them, France and England. Um, so they obviously were the keenest to do it. Yeah, um, I know England were keen, but not to not to sign up to all the conditions. But um, right. so we are going to have a world teams, and I understand we will send a team. Yeah. Um, I did say to them that. Uh, it'd be interesting they might struggle to send a coach with uh, quarantine and that kind of things because how many coaches are going to want to go and then come back and quarantine in Christmas uh, I can't see that being a big thing so I can see PC being number one player and head coach for, for that campaign well, he wouldn't be a bad coach <laughs> yeah. to be fair well he generally does have, um, he generally does coach all the players helps them out anyway yeah, anyway it? so yeah. I mean what? Uh, just, it just he just needs someone to carry the bag maybe Naylor can carry the bags um <laughs> So that'll be interesting, and uh, and obviously I'd like to think a couple of my guys might make that team. Um, I think right now it would have to be pretty set, wouldn't it? Really, you've got the top ones that are consistently making those finals. Yeah. Um, I think 
I mean, I could name the team right now. Yep. Which I will. Yep. Um, for right now, obviously, it's Paul Evan, Tim Wamba. Yep. Pretty clear cut. Yep. It's not, it's not really someone else that, that has been them. But yep. in saying that, I know there's three or four guys that would love to make that team, you know? Sure. Yep. Which have potential to make it. Yep. Um, they just need to start turning those results around pretty pretty quickly, I guess. Like I said, obviously, yep. Elijah and uh, Anthony will be coming back pretty yep. soon, obviously, yep. for world rankings and yeah. Oh, is Elijah? What are they ranked? I don't even know. Yeah, I mean Elijah's around the the sort of two thirties, I think. Uh, Leper's probably a little higher. Um, the the problem for those two guys coming back is that it's going to be difficult for them to fire straight away. Yeah. Um, Which and, they kind of need to yeah. at that stage. Exactly, and they're running out of events. Yeah. Um, and they have to do amazing. They kind of have to win everything to compensate for being out and not winning. I think they're going to have the drive, um, you know? the fire, you know, to push yeah, these yeah, guys, which yeah. is great because yeah. obviously having Luamba and Tema play each other a lot of the weekends right now. Yeah. It's like they live together, you know, and it's, it's yeah. I don't know. Um, but having someone else out of the picture right now come back into it with, yeah. with these two, I think that's going to make it um, interesting. And then I think obviously Wills has had a couple of good wins. Yeah. So he's going to be wanting to, wanting to push through that. And then obviously Joel as well, yeah. um, who's not far off, but he's just not quite, not quite yeah. converting yeah. into. into yeah, I mean the he had a good yet. had a good tournament, Henderson. But um, you're correct; he hasn't had the same results as Louis in teams. So that's correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I think yeah, yeah. he's going to have to beat one of them, beat both of them really. You know, to and 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 he'll be wanting to. I can't imagine that's not his goal. He'll be wanting to yeah, make sure. the top four in New Zealand, yeah. and he'll be believing that he can do it. Yeah, it's just about truly having that belief in, in those matches. And he'll probably need to change a thing or two to, to get over that line. But yeah, the possibility is there for sure. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, cool. All right. Um, before we send everyone to sleep, so you're you're transitioning. You're still playing PSA. Are you going to keep doing that realistically, or um, no? Okay, good. So you're <laughs> no. not going to renew your membership. No. Okay. No. Fair enough. No. no, no. I mean, I that started. Yeah. So I was um, joining the cops. And yeah, then, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That all got shut down. Yes. Um, because they didn't take anyone else in when I was looking to to go in. But I think yes. potentially with that career, I would have had a bit more time to, you know, train and, and a bit more flexibility. Yeah. Um, yep. With playing tournaments, but with real estate, it's just I'm just finding out that it's not too viable, and I just don't really have the drive to be playing professional. You yep. know, I, I enjoy yep. playing I tournaments, and yep. when I get the yep. time to play, I'll definitely play. I'm playing yep. Browns Bay this weekend now. Oh, Auckland okay. Open next weekend. Okay. Yeah. Cousin Shield. Yeah. Um, Thank me for your wild card at Auckland Open. Yeah, cheers, man. Yeah, um, old Fletch gave me the call. Yeah. Tough uh, game. What was up first round? Uh, yeah. yeah. It's a goodie. Yeah. A few weeks. Yeah. That's why yeah. I ended rounds well. I thought I'd get a few more games in. Before, <laughs> well, to be honest, it's mainly for Cousin Shield. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. nah, not, honestly, I'll be looking more to, um, I'll be looking more to, to, to help support the players where okay. I can. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, and there's you know there's one or two of them now who I kind of chat to obviously Mason, Elijah, me and him were hitting um, yeah that kind of come to me for advice here and there and I get on call with when I can as well yeah um but if I do well um, with real estate obviously it gives you a bit more flexibility financially as well and, and sure. so I'll be looking to support where I can support there yeah. and who well, knows I potentially another event at yeah. some stage yeah. as well um, so I think definitely if um if 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 um, I mean the first thing you got to do is, is sort yourself out financially. I, I don't mean that in a negative oh, no, way. I know, gotta, I know, don't worry. You got to find your own feet. <laughs> yeah, um, and yeah, I guess sure. like by supporting the players, mm. hitting with them, giving them your advice, yeah. being available, um, that's already quite a lot. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 e- yeah. Even though it's it's not monetary, it's it's exactly. actually very very important. Yeah. So I think you're already doing quite a bit. Um, if you're somehow able to find a sponsor, either. Um, in the industry or, or mm. elsewhere for the guys, that would be great too for an event or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That'd be super cool. Um, and so you're loving your real estate. Yeah. Um, what's sort of your niche? I mean, obviously you're, you're based out um, uh, west, you're in Lincoln Road, is that right? Or just off University, Universal Drive? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Harcourt's, yeah. In, um, Harcourt's Bluefin and, and Henderson. But okay. yep. um, honestly, everyone's asking me, do I just sell there? Do I just sell just out west? But everywhere in Auckland, sure. to yeah. be honest, it's easy enough for me to drive around. Yep. Um, I'm probably lucky through squash and through other things just to have to have a large um, database. Yes. Um, yep. 
So I think it's been just over two months now. I was lucky to get my first listing pretty early on, which goes unconditional today, which is great. Um, so I guess, you know, trying to get across to my own database first yeah. is a great way you know, yes, to start. Yeah. And yeah. I think people that know me through playing or coaching or events kind of know what I'm like and um, know that I work hard and know that, um, you know, I'm, I'm always around and I'm always easy to communicate with and all yeah. that and I'm professional yeah. in everything I do. So I guess doing as much as I can throughout my own database and um, just to get, like I, you've probably seen in the last week especially, I've been just trying to share a bit more knowledge. Yeah, saw the video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, just, it's a smart thing to do. Yeah, Just try to get yeah. myself out there a bit more, I guess. So, um, but really anywhere in Auckland, anyone that I can help. Um, cool. Yeah. Yeah, and basically, you want people to call you. You don't want them to go, oh, I don't want to bother Lance. You know, yeah, oh, 100%. Um, you want them to 100%. call you. 100%. You want to be annoyed by uh, whatever. For sure. Even um, if it's yeah. not a financial, you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm there for advice as well. Yeah. Um, I think in the last five months, you know, when, when I started my course, like I've learned an unbelievable bit of, um, amount. Sure. And, yeah. um, and having a couple of listings at the moment, like my learning journey has been steep, which has been great. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So I'm a lot more knowledgeable. No, cool. At the moment as well, which is great. So yeah, yeah. Well, it's good. I mean, I guess you, you know, like even I know you love squash, and and obviously you've had your your, your uh, I'm sure good and bad moments in squash and all that kind of stuff. And but it's good to see you at the tournaments. Good to see you supporting the players. Obviously, um, you still love the game. You still love playing, and it's a smart thing to do, as you said, to to work that network that you've got in squash in your in your business and help those people yeah. into homes yeah exactly yeah. well i think a lot of people have helped me you know throughout the past and that's one of my biggest drivers you know to to help where i can you know even if it's just a phone call or a coffee about anything yeah, yeah. um yeah. you know i'm always there for that so cool cheers bro cheers mate thanks good stuff all good good to have you around